This year, the senior class selected CNN correspondent Van Jones as your commencement speaker. Van Jones is an environmental advocate and civil rights activist. Recently named a co-host on CNN's Crossfire, Van Jones is president and co-founder of Rebuild the Dream, a platform for bottom-up people-powered innovations to help fix the U.S. economy. In 2009, he worked as the Green Jobs Advisor to the Obama White House, where he helped run the interagency process that oversaw $80 billion in green energy recovery spending. He's the founder of Green for All, a national organization helping to develop green jobs in disadvantaged communities, and was the main advocate for the Green Jobs Act in 2007. Under the Obama administration, this act has resulted in half a billion dollars for green job training nationally. He has worked for social justice for decades, fashioning solutions to some of our most difficult problems. He was named one of Rolling Stone's 12 leaders who get things done, Time's most influential people in the world, and Fast Company's 12 most creative minds on earth. He's the author of The Green Collar Economy and Rebuild the Dream. On behalf of this graduating class, I welcome you to Pitzer College. This work is right. Good. <laughs> well, first of all, um, let me just say this is the first commencement address I've done at a college that is wise enough to know that no college can build the future and burn the future at the same time. So, congratulations for the divestment campaign. Thank you for your leadership on that. I also want to just take one moment to acknowledge uh, faculty, staff, courageous leadership, wonderful graduates. You guys are not the biggest deal here. You're not. I'm looking at this part of the room. You guys look happy. I'm looking at the wings. You guys look conflicted. The parents, the grandparents, this is a tough day. It's a long road from diapers to diplomas. <laughs> a lot of poop. <laughs> Mainly coming out of the mouths of the teenagers. A lot of poop. <laughs> so before we talk about your great future, let's honor the contribution of your parents. Get on your feet for your parents, your grandparents, the people who got you here, the people who you owe this to. Thank you, parents. Thank you, mama. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, grandmama. Thank you, granddaddy. Thank you, mama. Thank you, daddy. All right. Now, to the number two most important folks here, you guys. I am now about twice your age, which sucks. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. I was a youth organizer half an hour ago. So uh, I can say with the uh, benefit of now 25 years of frontline work in community change, community justice, that the quest that you're now ending today is like the hobbit. <laughs> Compared to the quest that you're about to embark upon, which is like Lord of the Rings, all right? I got some geeks in here. I came to the right place. So as Gandalf. <laughs> Let me try to give you three pieces of wisdom that I picked up on my journey. 
that I hope will help you, because I think some of you guys actually are serious and might make a difference. <laughs> I think there might be somebody here who's actually serious and might get out here and get in some of these fights and try to make a difference. Here's the three things I wish I knew when I was in your chair uh, last year. <clears throat> The difference between facts and the truth, number one. Number two, the difference between ego and soul. Number three, the difference between fate and destiny. Number one, difference between facts and truth. You know, when I graduated from Yale Law School in 93, I moved to the Bay Area and started fighting against prisons. Um, I was, California had humiliated itself, disgraced itself by becoming the incarceration capital of the world. And uh, I was a young guy with bad attitude and a law degree. Uh, so I said, I'm going to sue some cops <laughs> and some prisons. So, and we came upon a dastardly scheme in Oakland, California, to build a super jail for kids in Alameda County. A super jail it would have been the biggest per capita jail for kids in the country. It had gotten through every approval process, and the community hadn't really been alerted to it until right before it was going to be approved. The facts were these. This thing was a done deal. It was going to be massive. It was going to be filled. It was going to destroy the lives of a lot of young people. And the facts were that it had been approved from the state, county, down to the local level. And we had one hearing. Facts were we were going to lose. And we had to make a decision. Do we even want to fight? You're going to be in this situation in your life if you care. You're going to be confronted with some injustice, something that's awful something that seems impossible to stop. You have to make a decision. To, are you even going to show up for the fight? We decided that even though we probably couldn't win it, we could not accept letting something like that happen to the children of Oakland without at least putting up a fight. And we put up a big fight. We had protests. We had sit-ins. We had press conferences. We did everything that we could. And as a result of that, something amazing happened. It turns out that where the jail was going to be put was in a white neighborhood. <laughs> and they didn't know either. <laughs> and we got to hoop and hollering yelling, screaming, and protesting, and somebody looked at the newspaper and said, Honey? <laughs> Do you know what they're going to put in our neighborhood? And we won. <laughs> now, we won because we love the kids, and they got involved because they were kind of scared of the kids, but the bottom line is <laughs> that the facts were discouraging. But the truth is, when something's that unjust, there's enough power available to change the facts. Number two, ego versus soul. Worked on that fight, fought on that fight, burned out. It's tough, frontline organizing. I got tired of going to funerals with young people in the caskets and old people sitting up in the pews. I got tired. I burned out. I needed to do something that I felt would be more positive. We kept bringing the kids home from prison, the youth prison. They had no jobs. They wound up in the adult prison. I said, we got to do something different. We knew California was going solar. I said, why don't we get these young folks in the community jobs putting up the solar panels? That way we can fight poverty and pollution at the same time. We said, why don't we have green jobs, not jails, for these kids? And so we got something started called the Oakland Green Jobs Corps. And a woman named Nancy Pelosi found out about it. 
She came over, saw it. She took me by the hand from Oakland, California to Washington, D.C. She had me testify in front of almost every committee in front of Congress. She was speaker at that time, talking about what we were doing with these young lives in Oakland. A guy named George W. Bush signed into law based on this effort, something called the Green Jobs Act, which spread that program all across the country. I wrote a book about it the following year called The Green Collar Economy. It became a bestseller. It's uh, six languages now. It's in 100 U.S. universities, including this one. And uh, a guy named uh, Barack Obama read the book. He liked it so much he put me on the transition team or let me be a part of that transition effort and I wound up in the White House for six months. We had been fighting to get a few thousand dollars in Oakland and within 24 months I was managing $80 billion for green recovery spending. Yeah. Best six months of my life followed by the worst two weeks. <laughs> Suddenly Fox News discovers my radical left-wing Bay Area past and they... <laughs> I, I won't go into this because I gotta keep the speech short, but I will say this. Anytime your primary source of news is named after a sneaky predatory mammal. <laughs> Enough said. So I so rather than put the president through all kind of pain and anguish trying to explain Bay Area left politics, I resign. I resign. It looks cool in the movies when you fall on your sword. It hurts. I went into a depression for a year. Nobody was sure I was going to come out of it. Devastating. You're going to be in the same situation at some point. If you really get out here and try and do something, at some point you're going to come up against a real dragon. Ego versus soul. Trying to come back from that. Every time I would try to do something great again or big again, I would almost shrink back down. So I don't want to play too big. If I play big, I might get hurt. I'm going to play little. I play little and I would just be hating myself because I'm not doing everything I could do. Should I play big or should I play little? In prayer and meditation, I discovered an answer, which I'll share with you. Your ego should always play little. You need an ego, but it needs to be small, not big, just small, strong, like a little tool, just so you don't get pushed around. You need an ego. But your ego should always play little. But your soul, your soul should play big. And don't let anybody stop you from playing big with your soul, what you believe in, who you want to stand for, who you want to stand with. Let your soul play big no matter what they say. No matter what they say. Your soul play big. Lastly, fate versus destiny. I landed on my feet. I get to be on TV. <laughs> get to debate with Newt Gingrich every day. I'm not persuading him, but I'm there. Got a new initiative called Yes We Code. We're going to teach 100,000 low opportunity kids to be the best computer coders in the world. Working with, oh yeah, we, you can't stop it now. You can't stop good folk. But now 
I'm closer to 50 than 20. And I'm just now beginning to feel like I can make a difference and I can feel that clock ticking. Fate, cruel, brutal, all of us have the same fate. This doesn't last forever. How do you deal with the fact that there's some things you can't do anything about? No matter how hard I work, I'll never be a 22-year-old good-looking Asian guy. <laughs> I just, it's just not my fate. All of us have a fate. You're, you're born to a certain body, a certain time, a certain family, a certain, you gotta, you're, 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 you're not a giraffe. You're not a, you're, you're, you're you, and that's got an end, man. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that and still feel some way to make a real contribution? Well, your fate you can't do anything about, but everybody's got a fate, everybody's also got a destiny. You have a destiny. It's different than fate. Even a little acorn has a destiny, huh? To be an oak tree. <laughs> Even a little acorn has a call to greatness inside of it. I could be an oak tree. Now, does every acorn become an oak tree? No. And every person doesn't fulfill their destiny. But you have a destiny. You have a calling inside of yourself to greatness. It may be on the world stage. It may just be to be the best neighbor, the best parent. But you have a call to greatness inside of you. And if you are going to be worthy of this education you just got, worthy of this school, Worthy of your parents' efforts, your grandparents' efforts. You have to be the kind of person that looks at the facts. Don't run from them. Look them square in the eye. But you stand in the truth. You can change those facts. You got to be the kind of person who's got a strong enough ego not to get pushed around, but doesn't come from ego. Because your ego is going to get battered and bruised. You can't come from there. You got to be the kind of person that says, I'm going to let my soul lead the way wherever it goes. And lastly, you got to be the kind of person that says, yes, I'm black, white, green, purple, I'm lesbian, I'm gay, I'm in a wheelchair, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I don't, all those things are true. But somebody somewhere put something inside of me that's bigger than all of that, that's more beautiful than all of that. And I'm going to make sure the world sings that song with me about the greatness inside of all of us before I go. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, parents. Congratulations, faculty. Thank you very much.